My name is Tiara. I'm Tiffany. And I'm Ron. And today we are back to talk about P Valley. Uh, this is season two, episode three, and it was titled The Dirty Dozen. So if you guys hang tight, we'll get started in just a second. Said we're talking Pea Valley. Um, you know, this episode titled The Dirty Dozen, things are kicking off with the tour. Um, Little Murder and Mississippi are out on the road, and you know, it looks like they definitely got a lot of chaos going on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and that's not even where the episode started. I mean, it's just it was a lot of mayhem uh all around. Um, I think everybody had something going on, but we can start with um, La Murder and, and Mississippi if y'all want, um, because they are out. They started their tour. It looks like they went to New Orleans um, at the opening of the episode, and we've seen Big Frida kind of hosting. So I like how they're tying in all of the, um, the different oh, towns from yeah. different areas. Mm-hmm. Um, and it looks, I mean, that, that champagne campaign song is hot. It I mean, is. That's one thing I say. The music is always on point. There it is. Listen, I like the music and I like the visuals. Yes. They came through with the visuals and stuff. I was like, okay, that's that's a tour that I would rock with. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like um, they're going out and they are taking all of these pictures and doing all these videos, still kind of like putting on that facade of being a couple. Um, which, you know... We talked about this last week. That's worrying for me with Derek. <laughs> because, oh, yeah. you know, we yeah. talked about how Derek is not really on social media, but that don't mean somebody can't send it to him. Oh, no. But Derek said last week that he watched, he said, I watch everything. That he's like, it's just amazing. So he, he will see it. He's pulling up ASAP. I'm predicting it. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, I hope that he don't pull up. You know, guns blazing or something like that, because he's erratic like like that. Well, I'm worried about you know, uh, little little uh, Keyshawn and, and I, little Keyshawn because <laughs> <laughs> she's so small. She's a little thing. Yeah, you know, well, I mean, fine, it's true, but she's a little thing. But you know, you do this when you got this this keg of dynamite at home, and you know, my concern is when you come home, this fool is gonna go hey. And you, you're working it with a little murder. You're doing your thing, honestly. I, I got that. And as I said last week, I hope that she makes enough money where maybe she can get somebody to pick up the baby. She doesn't have to go home and deal with that, that foolishness because I can tell you now, it ain't going to be pretty. Yeah. I don't want to see Derek making it out this season, to be honest. Yeah, I think I feel like, like he might pull up and if Keyshawn herself doesn't kill him. I mean, they got security. They got Teak. Teak Teak might take him out. You heard what they said this week, though. They're like, the security might need some security. Yeah. Yeah. He had a lot of mess going on this week. Starting stuff with Pico. um, Because once they went on to their Memphis stop, and you could kind of see they they bumped into each other. And and Maine, he was kind of trying to, like, level it out and make sure everybody kept cool heads. But you could tell something was going bound to pop off. It was it was but crazy. It makes me wonder: Does uh, Teak know uh, murder secret? Because Pico, he did it again. Like yeah. he said, the girl, he said, "You ain't her, his type." Right, right. I said, "See," and then Teak jumped on him. So I was just like, "Wow, he probably know." I wonder if they, you know, 
that, he's gonna that, that he's, he's going to out he's going to out him soon right and and people put two and two together too you know yeah you, yeah. you, start, yeah. you, you say that too many times and, and it's going to raise enough eyebrows and folks are exactly to this, that's not the first time because that's the that's why what's called beat him down exactly. the first time, um beat dude down and right. so then he said you're not his type and so he was defending him about that and i was like mm. and what the funny part to me was the um the girls at the pink when they saw everything online and they were like yeah. we sure always got some foolishness going on and yeah. i was like this ain't even her fault exactly mm -hmm. but she getting blamed yeah but you could just see that with little murder like in this whole situation with him buying the postcards and stuff to send to clifford he's um he's still like he's on the cusp of like a break breakthrough i feel like because him and mercedes kind of had that conversation i'm sorry um him in mississippi and she was saying like you you already messed up once you got to come correct this time and really like go for what you want and so i feel like little murder might be at a point where even if he was to get out it he might be okay with it it might take like a, a weight off of his chest and no longer be holding that secret in I think he feels also, um, and, and that's a good point. I, I just think that people who are basically in the closet like that, and, you know, he has a presence. He has this, this rough, this, you know, uh, type of presence. Yes, and, yeah. yeah, and he's trying to hold on to that while trying to deal with his, his natural instincts to be what he wants to be. And, and unfortunately, those two are going to collide and cause some sort of trauma for him because he doesn't appear to be the type of person that is ready to accept his natural uh, instincts. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't think so. So I, yeah, I, I think that, you know, being outed, if, if he doesn't do it himself, I don't th think it's gonna fare too well with him if somebody outs him. I said, I just, especially in the hip hop community, the black community and stuff, and his image is is kind of a, a rough image. He has he has gang image and yeah. stuff, and so I I just see it that could be difficult for him because he's definitely on the come up, right? And he's just like he's not there yet, and he's getting ready to blow up. No, and no. something like that, and you know, who knows? Let's look at little Nas X. And stuff, but he was already he had already blown up before right. he, you know, came yeah. out. Yeah, he wasn't on the ascent. That's true. It's true. And I wonder if um him being outed, you know, because everybody is saying that Merce uh, Mississippi is the draw for the tour or whatever. And so with him getting outed, that's going to affect not only his image but maybe his money as well, since most people are coming to see her. Right. If they see that it was all, you know, a fluke. It's like, okay, well, then what am I coming to see now? Because this ain't yeah. real. Yeah, but because it doesn't. It doesn't negate his talent, though. Right. He yeah. Does. But, the, yeah. but he the marketing have to fight even harder. Right, because the whole marketing aspect now, as he goes, it's higher. You know, he's he's reaching that plateau where he and 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 Keyshawn are right for each other on the marketing level, and so. The fact that you got the two of them, they look good together, they they work well together, and then you know, Lou Murder is outed, that affects the whole brand yeah. because we got a brand going on now. And yeah. so the question is, what do we do with the brand? Uh, if he is outed. So, and you know, like you said, either way, I think Keyshawn would be okay because she has her own manager. Oh no, she's she cool. Had other, she had other things outside of Lil Murder. Right. So she would be okay. But it's she a murder I'm worried but, about. But I mean, although Keyshawn has met a, a certain level by herself, ain't nothing wrong with being on that gravy train with Lil Murder because as, as we said, that train's doing nothing but going up. Oh yeah. So, but she well remember she was doing 400 k views by herself. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, uh, but you don't but you see what well, a mess all that up. You know, if if he's out it then that puts a blemish oh, on her. Oh yeah, it's you a monkey wrench for everybody. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Right. Uh, and the other thing I was thinking about too with uh, T, you could, I just don't think he gonna make it too much longer anyway. That little moment they had where they was reminiscing about how T looked out for murder in jail. And I was like, yeah, I don't know because you know, T is a little hot headed. Mm -hmm. And um, I can see like, suppose Pico does out murder 
if T for some reason has to feel the need to protect him or to, you know, be his defense, I can see he's already taken up a bullet almost, you know, he, he got shot. So I'm like, I can see this going further. And I don't know if he'll make it through the end of the season. Yeah. Well, in fact, you know, he did start a war. I mean, anytime, you know, you attack somebody like that and then somebody, as they do, start, you know, pulling out a gun and want to start shooting up the place, you just got into wartime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they kept saying that, like, we, what you trying to do, go to war? So. Well, yeah, because yeah. it's because you gotta remember the the gang ties. Yeah, because those those colors. I'm I'm looking at the colors of them bandanas. That each other, I'm like, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. They all mix. They never do. Now another thing that was going on. If we head back over to the pink, um, <laughs> roulette <laughs> has been breaking the rules of the pink. She is out here giving uh, extra services on the side that she knows she ain't supposed to be giving. Tricking. Tricking. Let's call it what it is. Tricking. Getting paid, though. She's getting paid. Tricking. Trick well, All right, look, I got you. you know, if you've just, seen the previews for next week, it looks like she's going to be getting called out for her extra streams of income. As well. Yeah, because it's like everybody else, I mean, he has rules that everybody has to abide by and and everybody puts in the pot. And I sure, sure know that money went in her pocket. But, you know, I didn't like how she's kind of like chastising Mercedes about like, oh, don't think of your bag is half, uh, half full. Think of it half, half empty, <laughs> you know? She's real, like, she real disrespectful. Yeah. She's real disrespectful. And then to have, you know, to add a little bit of insult to injury, you have Clifford and Autumn over here saying that they are uh, going to put Roulette and Whisper as the new headliners, which I mean, they killed the show. Yeah. Only, only to hell, yeah, they did, they did. But I, I say when I saw Mercedes do the private dance, for, oh, for, yeah, I, I know we get now. I'm not gonna go too far, but I'm just saying it was a beautiful dance, yeah, and I'm, it showed I'm, why she, she's the queen. Like, of right. course, Whisper and Roulette did their thing, but Mercedes is still the queen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I know we don't have a script, but we do follow order. And after, now that you mentioned that, see, you got my head spinning. Well, look, I, I, I saw that dance say, a couple of times. <laughs> the only reason why I would say that, well, I won't say the only reason, but one of the main reasons why I think that Roulette and Whispers Might was very successful is because they was on the coat. You know, they took a little hit and it looked like it helped the performance. So... <laughs> Oh, you, there was, it was raining money up in there. So, yeah, well, you know. No, they did their thing. Listen, I'm not hating on them at all. And what was funny to me, I was like, look, we just got one to clean up on Snowfall. Right. And then we come to P-Valley and we got a back on Coke. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. that was, yeah. But hey. Can we keep hell clean? Can we keep hell clean? <laughs> But, you know, now that we've brought up Mercedes, so she has been a little bit desperate for money because she has seen um, the people at the other businesses getting evicted and stuff like that. And I think she realizes, like, oh, it's only a matter of time before, you know, I run out. Um, So now she's calling Coach, who I was like, hold up, is this Coach Daddy? Because Coach got recasted. (laughs) So um, we got a new coach. (laughs) But um nonetheless she does take him up on his offer because he he put it out there last season mm-hmm. and he was saying you know you could come you could stay at my penthouse i'll hook you up pay you do all the works and she kind of declined but now we see her taking him up on his offer um and she ends up going out to his penthouse and to her surprise wifey is there <laughs> you mm-hmm. know and, and may i add may i add before you go any further Coach, brother man, got a fine wife. <laughs> Same thing. His wife is beautiful. I mean, I look. That goes to show. Wait, wait, let, 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 me paint, let me finish painting my picture of delight. <laughs> this was a fine chocolate loaf. Um, I, look, She's I, beautiful. She's beautiful. Strikingly, yeah. I had to close my eyes because the glimmer from the television set was just getting into my <laughs> head. I had to stop for a second. <laughs> She's beautiful. beautiful, yes. And that's the thing, though, with her, because you could tell she wasn't really down with it. 
and she had a little attitude when she walked in Mercedes tried to shake her hand she walked right past it but Mercedes is used to um you know manipulating you know she know how to get people on her team and so she complimented the wife's photographs and things like that and then as she went forward you know after coach was insisting that she show the Mercedes experience Wifey was on board after that. <laughs> well, you know, let's let's get into that a little, little deeper too, because it's interesting how, as the wife, initially, obviously, she had a problem with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yet, like a lot of experiences that you know, we know of, of, of those types of situations, they give in. And it's interesting. Do they do that because of the money, the lifestyle that they're in, and they don't want to break from that? It's a question I'm asking. and you know, or is it something in them that is more purposeful than that? Maybe they do enjoy it to some level, because as we see later on, you know, two things happen there with Mercedes. And I love Mercedes because she breaks things down and mm -hmm. she gets it real. And she mm -hmm. said, I'm a hoe, you a hoe. <laughs> so you need to understand we both hoes. And you know Everybody's what? Everybody's a hoe for something. I think you just answered your own question right I, there. You know what? Absolutely. Yeah. I think I just... Well, the wife, she cracked me up though, because she was just like, well, she said, I'm not no hope. Friend. I mean, friend. <laughs> Mercedes said, I ain't no hope. And she was like, well, you you getting getting money from <laughs> you sleeping with her. I'm like, you're kind of right. You might not be a hope, but that sounds kind of hoish. Hey, you know, ho, ho. You know, I mean, but it is what it is. But see, I think what you said is true, Ron, because I think the wife, because she mentioned, like, usually I don't meet his hoes. Mm -hmm. you know right. so so she's she been knows. aware though she's been aware and so she's I think it's the thing where she's just accustomed to the lifestyle and maybe she just doesn't want to let that go and so she'll tolerate him having women on the side so that she can keep her lifestyle and, and she here, respected the fact that Mercedes wanted to meet her yes See, Mercedes did two things to her that was just I mean That's the manipulator yeah. yes I mean first of all the way she complimented the picture and I don't even think when she took the picture, she had what Mercedes had in what Mercedes said. I don't think she had it in mind, but what she saw in the picture really just captivated uh, uh, her. And then, you know, the mere fact that Mercedes asked for her. She got it. I uh, think Mercedes, she, she appreciated that. That Mercedes appreciated got everything got Mercedes did. Yeah, because you're not just a, a cute face and a big booty. You got right. a little right. bit of sense behind you. And here's right. here's my point with purpose. So Mercedes, you know, she excuses herself so that they can get on with they, you know, with what they were there for, and then she joins them. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, right. She was all the way on board by the end of that day. Well, so, you can tell when she was watching Mercedes dance. It like was she on. Was, it was she on. was captivated. Yes. And so she was, she was, she didn't want, you can and see now, in the beginning, she she didn't want to look. Right. You can right. see. And then as she continued to watch, she was captivated. Yeah. She was done. And that's that purposeful thing comes in. Now she's hooked. Now it's a threesome. It's no longer you and my husband. It's right. a threesome now. It's on. So yeah. I could at least, and I appreciated that to some degree. I mean, she's a beautiful. Wow. Person. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me stop. Yeah, anyways, uh, yeah, that that um yeah, anyways. Yeah. So I, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I just, I'm wondering about the wife too, because a lot of women in those situations, they might be on board initially, but then eventually that jealousy starts creeping in. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I'm I wonder how long this gonna last. And you know, it didn't help that Mercedes had the little ringtone killing the vibe coming in. <laughs> I'm like, you know, her daughter's gotta be an early teenager, like a preteen or something like that. Why she got this little kitty ringtone for her? Yeah, 13, 14. But let me say one more thing. I think girlfriend's gonna start taking pole lessons. Mm. Mercedes might be training her. You never know. Mm. She she's gonna try to give her husband what Mercedes is doing. <laughs> well, I mean, she was so enamored by what she saw. And I think that that whole scene for her was not just something, a nuance, but it, it really opened up something in her. And we'll see later on, hopefully, mm -hmm. uh, if, if there is something to that. Because there was something about uh, Mercedes when she dances. It was, um, of course, it's erotic, but she's 
it was graceful. That dance, even the music, everything about it was like graceful and sensual yes, and everything. Exactly. So I was like, I appreciated that. Um, as opposed to Whisper and Roulette, who are awesome too in their own right, it's a different style. It's oh, yeah. different. Oh, yeah. And it's a place for both of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. so we talked a little bit about Terica. So Terica called earlier um, in the episode. Um, she had also gone to Patrice, uh, her drive through to get some goods for, you know, we, at that point, we weren't really sure. We could see Shell was kind of like passed out on the couch, but I was like, I don't know what happened. Did she have like a medical emergency? What is going on here? We just seen, you know, her mother passed out on the couch and her going to get, you know, a care package from the church. Next thing you know, we're getting the news that the sheriff is calling saying that Terica is underage driving and Shell is passed out drunk in the back seat and Mercedes needs to hurry up and go pick her up. So I'm like, how did we get to this point? And, um, you know, I thought the same thing. Yeah, of course. I had to keep in mind that this is still throughout the pandemic. So people were struggling mentally and some people took to their vices, you know, drinking or doing whatever excessively. And it looks like that's the situation with Shell because she was lit. <laughs> well, I think she, well, had, she had a lot to deal with too, right? you know, because as we learn in the discussion mm -hmm. when um, uh, Mercedes was trying to sober her up with, you know, spraying her with the water, mm -hmm. uh, we learned that um, it wasn't Shell that was the husband. And yet for her to grant his wish, even though he's dead, you know, trying to, you know, blaming Mercedes for what happened you know, I think she got win. It's not Mercedes' fault; it's your husband's fault. And and the fact that you were willing to to um, obey his last breath and take care of the of uh, uh, so that, it wasn't the husband though, because I don't know if she was that much. She's talking about her son because Shell is um, her son was the one who got Mercedes pregnant, but he died. And before he died, she was saying that he basically begged his mother to get custody of Terica. Okay. Um, I guess because he felt like Mercedes wasn't equipped to handle taking okay. care. Of him. My bad. I thought I I didn't. I my my thought was that was her husband, but but, but no, that was her son. Okay. Well, good, good point. Because I uh I had thought something similar because she was saying that seeing Terica was a reminder of that too, and I thought that led to her drinking and all of that. Yeah, well, she right. mentioned in the episode, she said that, you know, pandemic, she said something like something about pandemic struggles and things like that. And mm -hmm. she had been drinking a little bit more. But I think it also is the fact that, like, having the responsibility of taking care of yeah. Terica when, you know, she basically said she was being loyal to a dead man when when her son was alive. He wasn't loyal to her, you know. So it's like I think she felt like a little bit of resentment and some regret. Um, taking on that big responsibility and just feel underappreciated for doing so. Mm. So, I mean, it was a lot there. And then, you know, it, of course, it seemed like it was Mercedes' first time even hearing that because, you know, to hear that the person who you have a child by, their last dying wish was for you to not get custody of the child. Like, that's rough. That is rough. And then to also have Terica standing outside the door listening to that, makes it a little bit worse. Well, I actually thought it was better that Terrica un understood because she blamed her mother for so much. She blamed Mercedes for mm -hmm. so much. That's true. Uh, and I think for her to now know the truth uh, at that age. Yeah, she always wanted her. Yeah, she, Mercedes definitely right. said, she was like, I fought to get her. I begged you to give her to me. Right. And Terica overheard that as well. Right, so she, I think Terrica needed to hear that. And I think mm -hmm. that, that was that was well played. Um, because now uh, Terica and Mercedes can grow from there. They can still, yeah. 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 So yeah. that was a good point. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm definitely glad they had that moment. Mm -hmm. um, and I think from here, I can see Mercedes getting custody back um, of Terica because it looks like she's all everything she's doing is a means to an end. She's right. sleeping around with Coach so that she can get the money to keep her business open. She has mm -hmm. her business and trying to grow it so that she can get out of the strip club. And right. she has a stable income. And all of this, the end goal is to get her child. Get her baby back. Right. 
Yeah, except yeah. that I don't think the courts would look at what she's doing as stability or income. Or even <laughs> more, or well, if she, but she has a gym. And if she gets the gym to flourish, that is a legitimate business. Right. And I hope that her, you know, escapades with the uh, coach <laughs> pays her enough. The coach wasn't just paying her too. It sounds like he was pulling some strings because he got a phone call and she was like, oh, who was that? And he was like saying it was somebody, I don't know what he was related to, but she said, maybe an investor. Happy. Yeah, it probably an investor. And yeah. So, so coach. Well, he said one of his players had called and when he walked away, he said, oh, excuse me, one of my players uh, called me. So maybe he's going to invest. I, I don't know. Yeah, but, I think he's going to, I think he's going to help. Yeah, but, I think but, he's going out. He's he doing, I mean, he doing more than just giving her the day. <laughs> that's true. I, I mean, but even the money that she's making from that, you know, a few years, I mean, not a few years, a few months, she'd have the money she needs to, to uh, find a place and, and open it up. The question is, would it be close enough? She has enough? a place, though. Yeah, yeah well, it's about keeping it open. It's, it's about, about keeping it open. Yeah, yeah. So the whole point of that is she's making the money. I just... Uh, trying to get her daughter back, she just better hope there's no opposition to that because uh, the courts aren't going to look kind to her. Well, her she might problem. have some help though, because it looks like you know Andre is is vying in for a ma uh, the mayoral. What the mayoral would I tell you? Would I tell you? I, I really <laughs> heard him having that conversation with Corbin again, and you know her mother. So let's talk about Andre and Corbin first of all, because they talked about you know, trying to buy the pink, of course, and you see Autumn and Clifford, they had settled on like the 69% split. Um, so Clifford gets a little bit more now. And they were basically going back and forth between like, okay, what's a good number to where we would sell it? And then what are we going to do with these girls? You know, so they're still battling with that. But then on the other side, Andre is over there battling with Corbin and he's like, well, you don't have a brand. Um, you don't have a big church kind of backing you. And so he was like, but I, I'm willing to like put the bill. And so I was like, okay, well, at least Andre would have some backing. And the fact that he was Tydell's, you know, kind of um, his godson. Yeah, his godson, that could be enough to get him some brand recognition. So I think that they have a good chance of you know, at least coming close to beating Wayne. Oh, I, I, oh, I absolutely think he could win. Yeah, I, 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 Cor Corbin and his tactic, I like the tactic. He, he's, he's breaking Andre down about what he doesn't have. But then he says, if you're stupid enough to run, I'm stupid enough to back you. Yep. So, you know, I'm like, okay, that's a slick way to get and in. And that's how I was like, okay, well, may, maybe Mercedes might have some, some friends in some high places because, you know, her and Andre are familiar with each other. So yeah. maybe if Andre is to win, she could get his support in helping her get her child back and helping with the gym. Because Wayne, you know, sure as heck didn't, you know, he wasn't shy on using his authority to shut down Patrice's business after oh, yeah. him. <laughs> you that, know. Was, that was that was funny because she was uh I was like, she a pastor and she cussed that man out when they pulled. I'll she never, you know. She was smoking. She was doing all smoking. Kinds of I was like, okay. <laughs> I'll never forgive her for what she did to Mercedes. So, uh, you know, and you know, you got the word of God in your mouth, and the way you did your daughter was just yeah, you know, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. She so, she was foul. She was foul. She's got yeah. a foul mouth to go with it too. So. Yep. Yeah, she does. But, you know, I wasn't mad at her for calling Wayne out because... No, no I wasn't mad about that either. No, what she said, <laughs> but, I mean, she spoke the truth. You yeah, know, you can't I mean, be sending these pastors out here to basically extort their um, congregations into supporting your um, your mayoral election. Like, well, look at, look at where we live, uh, you know, and I'm not going to say exactly, but... <laughs> There have been these casinos opening up left and right, and all the promises were that the proceeds would go to these uh, the communities. And not a dime. Yeah. Not a dime. And it's so true. And it happens, you know, so the realism of that whole uh, episode, that whole segment was mm -hmm. just so true because yeah. it happens over and over again, time and time. Yeah. And they are pissed at Patrice for calling it out. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It seemed like most of the people in the um in attendance might have been on board until Patrice spoke up. Um, and so that's one thing she's good for. She she'll definitely uh make sure she's heard. 
Yeah. And, real um, talk. Real talk. Yeah. Patrice is something else, though. <laughs> she is definitely a trip. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I, I wonder how she's going to fare with her church being shut down, if, if she's going to be coming back to Mercedes again, asking for some favors or money or something. Because um, we seen earlier what the la the first episode, she turned Mercedes away. So they they definitely got some work in to do on their uh, relationship family wise. Cause it, it yeah, really she nice. just got to learn to be a mother. Um, yeah, that's that's what that is. You know, I don't think she's forgiving Mercedes. Mercedes put pause on her. Mm. But yeah. she gave Mercedes a reason to put pause. I, I didn't ready to yeah. say, you know. Uh -huh. Most of the time, you you got away with that. You know, most of the times it it, it should it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. Right. And so the I guess the last thing I was going to touch on was this thing with Big L and this other white boy who's doing the trafficking because he kind of insinuated that he wanted to back out of doing that stuff. He wanted to settle down and propose to Gidget and all this stuff, but then he sees uh, sees roulette. And at the end of the episode, you can see Roulette is coming back from some extracurricular activities. And, <laughs> and she spots them with the drugs. Um, and so I'm like, I wonder what she's going to do, if she's going to get involved with this guy um, or if she's going to try to use him, you know, or maybe possibly get involved with trafficking as well, trafficking drugs. I think she's about to bag. Yeah. So I think, I think she'll get whether it's drinking, whether it's the club, just drugs, whatever. I think she's all about the bag. Anything goes with her. She definitely right. um seemed like she was like flirting with him and you know oh, interested was. in what he had going on. So I could see that. Yeah, so I wonder if what's gonna happen if Gidget comes back. Because we saw Gidget FaceTiming with uh Mississippi in the yeah. first episode and so he's claiming he's trying to get himself together for her I wonder if she's going to end up coming back right and that's going to be a, a fight between those two <laughs> Gidget and Roulette yeah that'll be something to see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um if you've seen the previews for next week it also looks like Diamond will be making his return to the pink <laughs> yes that answers oh, yeah. the questions that one of our spotters had uh because they had asked why we didn't get into what would happen to Diamond, what was going to happen to Diamond. Oh, they, they were saying that we did not touch on the fact that, uh, you know, it seemed like we didn't have any sympathy for the fact that Diamond lost his job, this and the other. It's not that we didn't have sympathy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I had even said in the comments, I was like, Derek, Derek wasn't the only one who was unemployed. I was like, Diamond is unemployed too. And I said that in the comments. And there are other millions of Americans that were unemployed because of the, uh, the whole uh, pandemic. So, yeah, I mean, Di Diamond was just another casualty, if you will. But again, he's getting his, hopefully, his, his uh, comeback. So, you know. All right. well. I mean, he technically had another security job, so he wasn't really unemployed. Exactly. Right. Yeah, he got unemployed because Derek um, complained about him. Yeah. Because right. of the Keyshawn thing, and that's what I meant. He lost his job. Oh and no, I trust think that, me, I'm Team Diamond. I'm not. I'm Team Diamond too. Yeah, so I'm not sure uh, how we came off last week, but just no, they. Well, I sure, think we. we no, we just. I think we didn't touch on it. He he said that we. Um, they said we didn't touch on the fact that that I, this is another review that they didn't touch on how Diamond was affected by this and that. And to well, me, it wasn't just, a huge part of the episode, too. So right, I'm assuming right. maybe next week we'll get more of his backstory and what went on with him. I'm like, Diamond, is that you? Is that you? Is, that... <laughs> is somebody else, somebody alive for your character? Yeah. So I'm interested to see what goes on next week. It looked like it's some more chaos out on the road with Lil Murder and uh... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so Yeah, it's, it's, it looks like a bunch of drama on the road. But one thing that's clear, he's been sending postcards to... Uh, to Uncle Cliff because yeah. you can see from a different state like Louisiana yeah, and everything yeah. he it seems like every tour stop he's been sending postcards and it looks like Clifford is very endeared you know he yes like, uh, was blushing in the mirror yes yes so it's only yes. a matter of time before they have their uh reunite uh are reunited yeah 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 because they're staying and he's staying in touch 
Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm interested to see what goes on. I also see Uncle Clifford took to the stage this week. Uh, I was like, okay, you better come on. You better come on. I said, let me find out. Uncle Clifford know how to work the bowl too. Oh God, that, that would be an episode right there. I mean, he did. He opened oh, up saying, for them. It would be an episode to watch Uncle Clifford and Mercedes work the pole together. Oh, oh that's a tag team right there. Yeah, he was just warming them up, but I was like, he did all right. I said, okay. <laughs> yeah. She did all right. So, yeah, I enjoyed the episode. I'm I'm looking for the storyline to get a little bit further along because it didn't seem like we progressed too much uh, from where we were last week. I think the Mercedes storyline got further, but everything else kind of is still in the same place. So I'm looking forward to seeing where they take this thing this season. Yeah. Well, I let, think me say, let me say, too, about uh, Autumn. Um, I like her character. I, you know, I think people, we, we, we think sometimes she's kind of cold, but we got to remember she's a businesswoman. And when she yeah. said, you know, yeah. when she, and when she said to um, uh, Uncle Clifford about, you know, you being so beholding to the dancers, you know, this is all about money. And it's a business uh, adventure. That's something you're going to have to get, get accustomed to if you're going to be in business, you know, you, because yeah. sometimes you can't do both. Right. Well, Cooper is more than just business or for him. It's family. like his it family. is a family because right. you think about it. If he's there, they sell it. What happens to those people? I agree. I mean, I'm saying at times though, when you, you know, when you become a business partner, it's about the business. And, yeah. you know, as much as he might want to do something for the girls, it's still a business. So, mm -hmm. you know, at, at the bottom line, end of the day, a business decision is going to be made. Right. But I think we keep hearing it throughout the series, like over and over. We hear them questioning people like, are you even from here? Where are you from? Like, do, do you are you a part of this community? Because I think that's a big thing for them, because every time outsiders come in, they have no regard for, for the locals. And then they just want to toss them to the side and do whatever to them without considering their well-being. And so I think that that's why Clifford has a different stance than Autumn does. That's why um, you heard Corbin kind of calling out Andre, like, are you from here? Do you, what, what ties do you have to this community? Because we want to make sure that our people are still taken care of. And it's easy for somebody who has no ties to the area to come in and say, it's just business. Which is why they need to right. kill. Right. Which is why they need right. to kill that. See that casino, is a double-edged sword for them. In the one respect, it does bring in some, some uh, available in, uh, resources, I should say. Uh, but in the other sense, it kills the community. So, you know, you're gonna have to decide which devil you wanna live with. You know, the devil you know best. Yeah. Well, we are gonna see. <laughs> we'll mm -hmm. see where this goes. I don't know if that, that casino is gonna make it to Chuck Elisa. <laughs> yeah, that old casino. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, I enjoyed this episode. Uh, do you guys have anything else you want to add before we close out? Except that um, you know, I, I love the dialect of the show. It has that southern kind of ghetto drawl to it, and I have to, I have to admit, I had I had to use closed captions uh, this week <laughs> just to, <laughs> just to understand some of the things they were saying. And uh, I'm not ashamed of my game because I want to know. You know, but uh, <laughs> it is what it is. Just thought I'd throw that in. Mm -hmm. That's hilarious. <laughs> you had something to add, Tiff, or no? No. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to thank everyone for watching. Please drop down in the comment section and let us know what you thought about this episode. Make sure you also click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get alerted every time we post. And also follow us on all social media platforms at The Spot Real Talk on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. You can keep up with us. Tiffany just recently uh, was out of town in the MIA, had a great time at the AB ABFF uh, Festival. Yeah, check out some of our footage on our IG page and Twitter and everything. We had a blast. We have some surprises coming for you guys, too. Yes. Yeah, so make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned. 
um, like Tiff said, we got some stuff up our sleeve, so you don't want to miss it. Um, any any last words, Ron? You look like you might have had something. I was just gonna say she lit it up, so she she brought Florida home. So hey, yeah, that's right, and and a pole home too. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're virtual. So. COVID, COVID free, y'all, just in case you're like, oh, it's, I was tested a COVID free, but I did come home with a cold. Well, this is one time I'm glad that we're virtual. You keep it coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, we are going to close out and say good night. And please make sure you're back here next week, same time, same place, for another uh, recap of P Valley. Good night. Good night. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh, I been on the flex since flex on. Neighborhood all in your eardrums. I ain't never scared like bone crush. Boy, I got God, don't fear none. My line busy, take no calls. Feels like I don't have no flaws. Snakes in the grass, cut those off. Yo, squad shady, my bros rock. No breaks, we go, 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 go. Those shade, that's a no, 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 go.